first question this is not 44a this year company is law on 10 metric ton of copper at 534 per kilogram for intends to remain so far so far the entry in quarter the variance of k in its quarter future prices or 16 percentage and 36 percentage respectively are in correlation coefficient of 0.5 the contract size of one contract is 1000 kilograms calculate the optimal hedge ratio for perfect hedging to advise the position to be taken in futures market for perfect hedging determine the number and amount of proper futures to achieve perfect pitch the first and foremost thing that you have to understand is we have the underlying and we have futures so if the objective of holding the underlying asset Our objective is only to hedge. It means to protect against risk. <laughs> protect against risk. This means loss. If you are in long position long means buy what is it we are expected to do in futures market we are both short sorry you are short you are short that is sell in underlying about to go for law okay this is basically we are having the objective of hedging okay if you are not having hedging as the objective but you consider that it is speculative that is that i don't care for the risk when i have little amount of a little amount of investment on if they have gone long here i will expect to go long here also right so when we are short in underlying asset sell we are expected to go short in underlying also so therefore when you read firstly a problem What exactly is the is the object is what you have to check. It is something like when a person is going to stay gym or to a nutrition, you know, there is nutrition consultant. So the nutrition consultant or the personal trainer in the gym should know what for the person has come, whether to increase the weight or reduce it. Accordingly, the programs will change. So. So likewise, here also we should be knowing as what is the relationship between underlying asset and the futures. So here they have mentioned it so clearly in the first question of the one hedge ratio. Therefore, by looking into what is that in underlying they have just done that is in copper they bought now. That means they got to go short in order to have this hedging carried out. So what is that? Hedge that you have. So, what is the formula that you have? So, this is on one to one basis. Answer to the question will not be on one to one basis. The reason is that this futures will always be on standard quantity basis. Standard quantity basis. So, whereas in case of option, what will happen for one underlying asset? You can go for one option. 
small option or put option depending upon what uh, sort of uh, position you are putting up in all the time. So they are all available on one to one basis. That means any quantity you can buy. Uh, you can't buy any quantity, especially in futures. This is always a standard quantity. Say, even if they want to lift a lamp, I require a matchbox. I require only a matchstick, but I got to buy one matchbox. And similarly, a lot of products are made in this world where minimum quantity that I want to buy and sell will be some quantity, even though you may require only a part of that. So, that is the reason as why. When your requirement is so much, it cannot be matched exactly for the same quantity for the futures. Therefore, you will always be having some ratio. That is what you call it what is a HQ ratio. Ratio for which you have a formula. HQ ratio you always have as a formula. What is that? Standard deviation of the security divided by standard deviation of the into correlation coefficient. This is what you have as formula. So for example, I remember when my mom used to cook back, I remember it was a kerosene pump stove and with no uh, um, so we, I have this mean my mom used to have for one glass of say, rice. She will be putting three times that in the vessel and that will just boil. And uh, it will be a nice uh, cooked rice. So, where have you seen my wife got did that in the kitchen or we are cleaning with a cooker and a gas? So, she did not put the same quantity, I mean, the water. The ratio itself is undergoing some amount of change because of the method. So, as you know, the ratio of what is being taught at the early stage for it a few production. Or different process, and the same is or in ultimately remaining the same, but the process being different, so therefore the inputs are different. Same is the way in this particular case when we know that underlying asset and futures are not matching in terms of quantity, then you go by the ratio. Like uh, my mom was just giving it as uh, one glass of rice food, three glasses of water. My wife had just done that uh, with uh, only two glasses of water. And uh, a little extra quantity of water, that's all. It's a uh, little over two, but not three. And uh, she will put for three whistle, four whistle, and uh, the number of whistles will uh, ensure that the, cook, the cooking stage of the rice should be just enough or a little more for even the kill. So, likewise, you always have one ratio. This particular formula, which will have a good logic. So at this moment, let us not spend too much of the time on to that. The standard deviation of the security, you have a 16 percentage as the variance, standard deviation of 4, that is square root of 16, and the square root of 36, and multiplied by the correlation coefficient of 0. So this comes as 4 divided by 6 into 0. 0.75. That will depend upon the ratio that we also adopt. So that is going to be 0 0.49999. That you can just take it as 0 0.50. So that means the head ratio is to be taken up as 1 is to 0 0.5. So that is the one that you should be understanding. So that's right, 0 0.5 is yes, correct. Then, second question advise the position to be taken in futures market for. Perfect hedging. So, first one is only the ratio. They are not really worried about what was your investment in the underlying asset. So, now the second part of the question will capture all that information. Now, let us just proceed for the second part of the question. Since the company is in a long position, what sort of uh, position they got to take down for hedging? So, understand always don't get a confusion based on the solution that you draw. So, in this problem, it is a hedging. Therefore, we are taking up opposite position. So, since the company is in a long position um, in the market, futures market, they will be taking up short position. So, this is what you want to understand because of the hedging. Had it been a speculative deal, long position in both cases, short position in both the cases. So, for this, we have already answered. So, third part of the question determine the number and the amount of proper futures to achieve to get a perfect hedge. So the third one, of course, that we will be using the input there. 
and that you have the requirement as 10,000 kilograms because 10 tons is what they do. The metric ton is 1,000. So, a metric ton would mean it is 10,000 kilograms divided by 1,000 and that should be giving you with a pitch ratio of 0.5. So, you are expected to enter into 5 contracts. So, what is that formula that you have? The formula that you have for the third part is the underlying contract divided by 1 futures contract. So, underlying contract 10 metric ton divided by 1000 kilograms into edge ratio. Delta is what we call edge ratio, we call it as a delta or delta. Divided by 1000 means to 0.5 is equal to 5 contracts. And they have mentioned so clearly that 5 contracts and each contract has got to be having a multiplication of 134 kilograms. So it is 5000 contracts, 5 contracts, each contract has 1000. So, 5000 kilograms into 1000. Okay. 5 contracts, each contract 1000. So, therefore, it should be multiplied by the start price of 5000. So, this is the contract size of each. 5000 into 5000. That comes to rupees 6 lakhs and 70,000 short. So, the second part of the question. This is about Black Scholes model. So, from the following data, for certain stock, find out the value of all options. Price of stock now, AB. Exercise price 75. Standard deviation of 5 plus 3. Compounded annual return is equal to 0.4. Equity period 6 months and annual interest rate is 12%. Given number of standard deviation from mean 0.25, 0.35, 0.60, on area of the left or the right, one type. 0 0.4013.3821.2921 is a 1, 2, and 0.274. And uh, uh, b to the power of uh, 0.12 to 0.5 is equal to 1.062. Natural log of 1.0667 equal to 0 0.0646. So now I need to tell you that the black shot is the point which you have here. Arriving at the solution you have. I hope that you would have uh, had this experience by listening to the class. So, step number one natural log of this by x, where s is greater than x. In case, in case s is less than x, then it is minus natural log of this by s. So, in a little amount of hampering, I just done. I hope that you will be there uh, listening to the lectures in the regular class when you know, option was taken. So, step number two is D1 is equal to natural log of this by x plus, plus RF plus standard deviation of wire divided by 2 The whole divided by wire, uh, there is standard deviation of the root of t. So, we are not expected to have, what should I say, have the computation here. This information is very much provided here. Now, let us just uh, understand in this problem, yes, stands for, for and uh, x stands for x express. For, and, uh, this is x express. Understand spot and exercise press. So, natural log of AB divided by 75. So, why is that you have AB divided by 75? Now, let us take the calculator. AB divided by 75. What you just get is natural log of 1.0667, which is given in the problem as 0 0.06 courses. 0 0.06 exactly the same problem I have handled in the class. I 
don't know how many of you remember that. But, uh, I just solved it, but I will take one more opportunity to explain that. So, on in 0646 plus risk to free rate. Risk to free rate uh, is 12 percentage. So, on in 1, 2. Plus, standard deviation required divided by 2. So, this 0.4 Required divided by 2 into T. So T stands for the period which is always to be expressed as fraction of the year. So the whole divided by 0.4 multiplied by 6 by 12. So some of these computations vary a little what you will see. I will not say it's very difficult or not. It's going to take some amount of time. So now let us just take the calculator and uh, operate it. So first we I'd like to take up the numerator within brackets. So point four square divided by two plus point one two point two six divided by twelve plus point zero six four six. So that comes as point one six four six. The whole divided by here, four. That should give you point two eight two eight. So B one is equal to point one six four six divided by point two eight two eight. That comes as point five eight two zero. Okay, that comes as step number two. Step number three is B two is equal to B one minus Standard deviation in the square root of it. Point five eight two zero minus point two eight two eight. So what is the number that you interpret? Point five eight two minus point two eight two eight. That should give you point two nine nine two. Okay, normally this can be rounded off to point five eight. This can be rounded off to Point three zero. Isn't it? Step number four. What is that we do in the case of step number four? We will arrive at normal table value of B1. So normal table value of NT point five eight. But unfortunately, we were not provided with the normal table value. But we are provided with the area of left or right side one by one. So we all know in the case of normal distribution, it will be a bell shaped one. It will be a bell shaped one. And now uh, the middle one is the mean. That is mode, that is uh, mean, median, and mode. So it is mini model. So, the probability of any number that we achieve greater than B will always be on the right hand side. So, if you shade the area, it is going to be 0.5 plus. So, but what we have in normal table value, so that it will be like this way. That x minus x bar divided by standard deviation. We will arrive at this as z. That is equal to x minus x bar divided by standard deviation. When it is positive, that the given value is greater than the mean. So, this number is going to be positive. And in normal table value of z that we will be finding out in normal table. So, probability that we arrive at will be 0.5 plus normal table value of z. So, I will put a case in this fashion. So, please just don't worry about that. So, in arriving at the probability, we normally take three steps. Z is equal to x minus x bar divided by standard deviation. Okay. That x bar is mean. X will be given in the problem. This will be standard deviation. This is the first step that we carry out. Then next one is the normal table value of z. 
from put from normal table value. From normal table, we will pick it up for z value. Whether it is negative, positive, we will get the normal table value of absolute set. So we don't have separate value for negative set, separate value for positive set. It is only absolute value of z only we will have it in the normal table. So probability is equal to 0.5 plus normal table value of z if z is positive. So probability is equal to 0.5 minus normal table value of z if z is negative. Okay. Now your area when it is shaded it becomes false after 0.5. So area is Greater than 0.5 if it is right tailed. Right. Area, the shaded area is less than 0.5 if it is left tailed. Any left I think or you can see. So here I understand for all these values of Z, I am not getting normal table value. It is area which is less than 0.5. When it is less than 0.5, we would only understand that we are on left type, area of left type. Right. Now, we do not know, or we are very much unfortunate to find the number that we are getting as B1 as 0.5. For B2, it is 0.3, no problem. So, we can work out a little easier. Anything that is tough, no. This is a learning point. Now, let us remove the normal table value in this fashion. For 0.58, sorry, for 0.55, area is 0 0.2912. 0 0.2912, sorry, 0 0.2912. That means how this number would have come? 0.5. Minus normal table value of z would have just brought this figure to this level. So, which is 0.5 minus normal table value of z. This is z value. So, normal table point, normal table value of z is equal to 0.5 minus 0.2912. Normal table value of z is equal to 0.5. 
small a two two five seven minus small a two zero double a divided by point six zero minus point five five multiplied by point five eight minus point five five. Right. This is a simple prorata computation only. Now just do that. Remove all your memory plus. Point two two five seven minus point two zero double eight whole divided by point zero five into point zero three this value plus point two zero double eight. So what you end up is point two one eight nine. Am I right? Are you clear about this particular portion? The entire black shot model is very simple. But they have given the information in such a fashion that you have to take a lot of pains to arrive at this information. So, are you getting it? Let me know. Are you following? So, either you can put it in chat box or you can unmute and let me know. Yes, sir. Are you here? Are you following? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, this is for step number one. You can find out normal table value of Z. One three. Thank you. So step number four is like that. Step number five. Normal table value of point three zero, which is equal to point five minus the area for this being point three two one. So therefore, it is point one. One seven nine. Let me just take up point five minus point three eight two one. So point one one seven nine. So I am just very happy with the step number four and five, and especially step number five because it is ready already. Now n p one, which is equal to what is the probability? Which is equal to point five plus normal table value of z. Which is equal to point five. Plus normal table value of z, which is point two one eight nine, which is equal to point seven one eight nine. Right. Then step number seven, n p two, which is equal to point five plus normal table value of this particular piece, one two, which is equal to point five plus point. One one seven nine. So point six one seven nine is step number two value. Step number eight is DVR to the D raised to minus one. Last one. Last one thing. Seven one eight nine plus 
equal moment is 13.8. 13.88 is the final answer. I'm not very sure about what uh, this RTP would have this communicated on the subject by that. Point nine six. That could be some approximation error. So answer is thirteen point eight eight is perfect accurate answer. Is that clear or not? So this is what in the class also I would have just done that. Question number three. This is about uh, this global depository receipt. So how money can be raised? In India. Now let us take up question number three. Odisha Limited has proposed to expand its operation for the twice funds of dollar fifteen million net of six hundred to amount to two percent of the issue size. It is proposed to raise the fund to get GDR issue. It considers the following factors in pricing the issue. The expected domestic market price in the share is 300. Three shares underlie each media. Underlying shares are priced at 10 percent discount to the market price. The expected exchange rate is rupees 60 per dollar. Calculate the number of GDR fee issue and pass to the GDR to Odisha Limited. If 20 percent dividend is expected to be paid with a growth rate of now, first and foremost thing that we can understand is if the net issue back to be 15 million, this question number three. Say if your gross is going to be say 100, and uh, when they say issue size, if the issue expenses comes to two rupees, net realization. Is going to be nine, isn't it? So, in this problem, they have mentioned that they require 15 million net of this is 15 million dollar. What should be the size of the media? So, that we have to find out that last issue price. When you want 15 million, it should be priced greater than cross issue price shall be 15 million divided by 98 multiplied by 100. So, that comes to 8.3061 million dollars. This is the first to say that we are taking up this. This I would consider totally as the working out number one. Working out number two, we understand number of equity shares to make one media. Three shares, equity shares here will make up one media. That is global depository receipt when it is one unit there, it will be covered by Three shares here. The price per share. Price per share is so we have a very clear mandate there saying that underlying shares are priced at 10 percent discount. So discount rate 10 percent. Then price will be 90 percent. Therefore, GDR in INR. Of course, it will not be INR, 
but firstly we will find out INR and then we will be finding out two types of dollars three and four
And what is this 98 percent indicating for that? So, maybe the flotation cost we have to think about 98 percent. Net of flotation cost. Net of flotation cost. How much is it? 810 multiplied by 0.98. So, don't have any confusion regarding the discount and the flotation cost. So, shares are issued by the company 10% less than the market price. Okay. On the way, there is a reduction by 2%. So, please don't have a confusion. The price without discount is 900. Company pricing it 10% below, so 810. Issue based cost is 2% on 810 only. It's an FYBR. So, 810 into 98% will give you 793.30. 810 is the price. By the company, 2% is issued later expenses. So, therefore, net amount reduced, net price. So, what is cost of equity or cost of GDR? Cost of GDR is equal to V1 divided by V0 plus V2. After all, GDR is nothing but equity, no? It is equal to 6 divided by V0, which is 793.80 plus the growth rate of 20%. Which is 6 divided by 793.8 plus 0.20. So you end up with 20.755. My hand is running, so we can round it out to 20.76 percentage. This will be final answer for the second question. Now let us just check out what exactly the answer for this. We can also get said that. So, dividend per share is uh, 6. Correct. 20.76. So, they work on very swift, lesser number of steps that as we have taken more. So, with that, we could just complete three problems. Completely. 